And on the left side, as the blue team, we have our French contenders, Mad Corp Esports, and they have Monto on the Nubarak, Kenny on Kerrigan, Lolini on Tassadar, and Lili is played by J. K J uh, MC. I go, M I'm going P with Jellic. Yeah, Jellic. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that was too hard. And, and then we have Junul uh, playing Tychus. Indeed, and on the other side, we have in the red trunks free agents four, playing the bright wing three, up in the top. We have Entenswerg. That's an interesting <laughs> name. I'll translate later on. on. Shadowmare is on the Rhaegar. Noxout is on the Arthas. Hippo, Hippu is on the Illidan. And on the Valor, we have Dazdigo. And this happens every time free agents play. There's usually a death rush, only for the first time we've seen them play, no one actually died due to the Oracle from Tastar. Yeah, because they're not going for the triple stack, and uh, yeah, I don't know, free agents, they're still sticking around, and this is this is what happens on, on uh, Cursed Hollow in the early game, well, on pretty much any map, but um, this one even more so. Oh, Monto actually oh. uh, scouting out Noxout, because he wasn't in the brush, I don't know what's happening there. Bit of not paying attention there, like you said, being caught out of the brush. The impale misses the issue a bit, like you pointed out. And Tychus doing what he does and being a good counter to Illidan, but it's not enough. Illidan already taking Oh, and nice Kerrigan stun, but Montus. He's so close. Oh, he gets out. Yeah, Noxart gets away too. Nice save here uh, by Hippo and Agnes work just getting in the way so that uh, Junel couldn't hit him. But that was a nice early pickup here for free agents. Yep, and like I did just point out during that fight, Tychus is a fantastic counter to Illidan, which is why you can see them all gathering around this top lane and waiting to see if they can catch him out. But Tychus is already mounted up. He's playing cautious. He's not going to get caught out. So they're abandoning that and they're going to try to roam to the bot lane, but they've already run into trouble. Yeah, because we have uh, Hippo, in ha Hippo helping out Shadomir here. And Arthas is also on his back. But so far, I don't know, it looks like they want to go for the camps here pretty soon. Camps won at two minutes, so they have 15 seconds to see if they can get something else. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the top lane. But right wing, oh, oh! get picked off by Kenny. Great Excellent there, combination. Kenny yeah, Kenny will be picked off here. Nice job, knocks out getting the kill there. And he's still sticking around, trying to gain uh, gain entry into top lane. Yep, and so is Hippo now, that happens to come back. Uh, I like that little follow-up there, a nice, nice synergy with the skills on Enten's work, where she basically um, got the uh, got the grasp going and then put out the um, spikes, the impale, and it worked out so nicely. Yep, it was very, very well played. First tribute is up, and free agents definitely are currently in a better position for this. With they already have two people in the bushes, three yeah. people now around this tribute area. It's going to be very hard for Mad Corps to assail this. Right wing's going to start. There's the Oracle. But Tassadar already engaged one. He's going to be chased out by Noxat. But that does give Tychus free reign to interrupt Right Wing until Illidan comes back in. But now he's just going to be overdrived and have serious trouble getting in here. Good oh, stun. No, everyone's... Oh, incredible <laughs> stun. And Illidan is picked off. Right Wing is picked off. And Noxat and Shadow Mater have to get out of this fight. Already took a lot of damage. Now they just want to stay in there a little bit. Try to disrupt if they can. But this is going to be the pickup for... Mad Corpse, and they even get the kill here. Very, very well played there by Mad Corpse. And while all of that was going on, they've actually do that with four people. Because Jellic's been in the bot lane just soaking XP this entire time. Yeah, they did a really good job on this first tribute. Uh, I gotta say, I mean, um, even though they weren't in the perfect position to take it initially, uh, they just made that perfect move. Uh, Tassada pulling out Arthas, and then Tychus coming in from top, just disrupting Brightwing, and they, they had four players joining the fray, and yeah, managed to just overtake that fight. Yeah, it was very, very well done by Mad Cops. They are now going to try and take advantage of this, just by getting mercenaries. Once you are ahead, you try and stay ahead. We can see the free agents have already got theirs, but they are now circling around. They're going to once again try and get Tychus. Ooh, Tychus is in trouble himself. here. Let's see. Oh, the root misses there, and Tychus one more hit Venom. on him. In Venom. Oh. He doesn't have the fountain. He goes down. Oh. I was wondering why he didn't go for the fountain straight away, but yeah. If he wasn't cooled down, that's quite unfortunate. Maybe he should have stayed in the fight for a little bit longer and... Uh, Try to pull someone towards Monto who was coming in to help him out. That might have been nice, but 
was not able to get anything. Second tribute is up once again. Really nice position here for free agents, but in comes Mad Corpse looking for an opportunity. Jellic, though, already gonna blind Valor. Valor does not get stunned. Oh, is it enough? Oh, the Envenom! The Envenom! Oh, Ooh, that was good. incredibly close. Tess Dingo making a run for it, but he did manage to do so. And now Entenswerk with a nice disrupt on the tribute. There's the stun. Shadowmere knocks out getting quite a bit down there. And Illidan is the first one to go on free agent's side. Brightwing also quite low, staying back there. And knocks out has to get out of the fight, but can he get can he get healed? Yes he can. Shadowmere with a Shane heal. And this is gonna be Mad Corpse taking the second tribute in a row. Yeah, Mad Corpse do take the second tribute. Oh, Arthas! He's so low! <laughs> <laughs> he, d he is able to get out of there alive. But like you said, Mad Corpse getting the second tribute in a row. And it's not really looking too good for free agents at the moment. They're really struggling to get their foothold here. Even with this double support lineup they have, even the tanky players who are being healed constantly, like Arthas, are unable to stay in. Yeah, that's quite surprising. Uh, but then again, uh, we had to have a look at Lily now, because you talked about this, uh, the healing. And Lily, with almost 4,500 points, uh, she's just as good as Brightwing. And Rhaegar not doing all that much, so uh, we have to check out how they're actually playing Rhaegar here. Uh, they're going for the Healy Totem, uh, Feral Heart. Quickly that Lily has that much healing, despite the fact that for the first tribute and a bit, she was in bot lane on her own while Brightwing was helping her teammates in the yeah. top lane. That's true, that's true, you gotta keep that in mind. And now they wanna stop these Seed Shines, and looks like they can, and Tess Dingo is in trouble one more time! Tychus comes in from the back, and there's the pickup. And this puts them in a perfect spot to clear out these Giants as well, and they have taken the boss, who's just wailing away here, and with that last pickup on the Tribute, wow. Yeah, he's gonna push down this fort, no trouble. Yep, he will push down this fort very easily. The golem is going to do so much damage. There is a golem now in the top lane that will be attacked by towers and minions, and we can see Mad Corpse just going to let that happen. They know their buildings will take care of it. There's no way that free agents can afford to stay and get to go and push with it, so they're just going to go push with their golem and protect it. We have level 10 up now for both teams. Uh, we haven't actually seen their heroics in play yet, I think, so we have the Juck of a thousand cups uh, on Lily, Locust Swarm on the noob, um, Archon, oh wait, give me a sec, they're fighting. Oh, it, the overdrive is coming out, like you said, no ultimates have been popped yet, but it's going really though. I'm really worried about the fact that Valor has taken strafe, it's so risky against this comp, it's just full of interrupts. I'm really not happy with that, but let's see if she can pull it off, oh, oh. my god. There it is, they're going in, and Rhaegar, he's already so low, there comes the ancestral healing on Hippo, he's still alive, and just diving in there, but even with the heroic, he needs to get out of the fight, and Rhaegar is picked off, Noxout has to get out as well, and Vala, she did pull off the strafe, but I don't think it did all that it much. It was interrupted, it was interrupted almost instantly, she got about half a second worth of strafe off, and was then completely taken out, and that's a huge amount of damage lost. Oh yeah, definitely, and that's that's the issue you were talking about with the disrupt abilities by Mad Corps. It's so risky to take strafe. Um, yeah, man, it didn't really work out in this fight. Maybe she can make it work uh, in the next one, but you have to stay back. So, f like, and I don't know. That's not really where the strength of strafe comes in. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be in there. Like the best strafe you can do is really just putting it off and keeping your opponent just on the edge of it, so you're as far away as possible. If you can get that, like. F Strafing people as they run away is a very good thing to do, as long yeah. as you can keep up with them. But if you're being interrupted by someone like Anubarak, for example, which was picked before Valor, so she picked into the Anubarak, who can interrupt from range, it's just so risky, and I would have way preferred Rain of Vengeance here for this scenario. I think the reasoning was that you usually have Anub going into the fight with, the dis uh, with his uh, stun, but then again, I mean, by the time that you want to chase down players, he probably has the stun available again, so I don't really like their choice here. Yeah, I think it would have been just better if they chose Reign of Vengeance, but it's just not working out for them at the moment with the strafe. However, Ancestral Healing is taken, so there's a chance to keep Valor alive if she does actually get burst down. 
But like we also pointed out, Junk of a Thousand Cups is available. This is going to be doing a lot of healing. And when we get to level 20, it's going to be doing double the amount of healing it's already doing. You're going to be seeing people getting completely burst down and then healed right back up to full before they die by this Lily. Oh, nice blink by Ants for keeping yourself there. Oh, but... Everyone's coming in. Mad Cops wants to take this fight. They're really committing to it. And Odin Form is already popped and taken out. Can he get out of that fight? Nope. Rhaegar can't. And no one can. Lili's so low, but she is able to escape at the back. Illidan also able to get away. He's going to be healing himself. Valor and Brightwing also dropped very low. The full strafe did go, did go off. But the Jug of a Thousand Cups was also up healing back a lot of that damage. And Double Shrink Ray has been taken by Mad Corps. These are going to be being used on people like Illidan, people like Arthas, just to remove any of that damage potential they have. Oh, this is a really good spot for Mad Corps once again, but they are all quite low. So um, maybe, maybe if Free Agents buys a little bit of time to just get all of their heroes back in this fight, they have a chance to uh, take this next tribute. But yeah, as I said, they have to buy time. They have to buy time indeed. And I would like to congratulate Brightwing on keeping up with Lili in terms of the healing, but Hippu, he's in danger now. Venom has been popped onto Tychus, but there's the Jungle of Thousand Cups, keeping him alive. It's so close. There's the first aid. And Tychus gets out thanks to Lili there. He's going to back up, and they're just going to kite the enemy team back to their base. But what a chase by free agents. Owen knocks out. He's in trouble. Kerrigan jumps on top of him. There's the grasp, and yeah. They get him. Nice storm set out by Tassila as well, just to um, cut off his retreat. And, well, at least free agents use that time to have Brightwing take the tribute. So that's the first tribute going to free agents. Yep, and they're actually going to get a four for this as well. Bot lane, there are some siege giants pushing, and they do take that down, giving them a little extra XP. And these giants may actually get the tower as well to give them another little burst of XP. But it looks like Tassadar has come down to put an end to this madness. Yeah, and Mad Corps, they're gearing up to take their boss. It's almost halfway down, and just now free agents are reacting, and they don't have an entire team here. I think they're just gonna disrupt this. There's the Oracle out of Lonely. I don't know what they're doing here. It's actually quite risky. They they're wanna go for to, the steal. To make a paranoid. They have to now, they have to go in. Get in the circle. Illidan's in the circle. What can he do? He's being burst out very, very heavily there. Shadow Mare's in there as well. There comes the Hesper healing onto Shadow Mare. Lili's Jungle Cousin Cups also went down, but they're all down. Strafe did Ooh. go down, and they do pick off Kerrigan. Yeah, and Smirk is quite low as well, though. And Lili is finally picked up. Monto has to also get out of that fight. But in the end, it was Mad Corps that did take the uh, boss here. And oh almost a team wipe. Maybe knocks out will be taken out as well. Still Tychus and Tesla alive. This is a strong contender, I think. Uh, I knocks think out is in trouble. Another overdrive. There it yep. is. And he does go down. Really good job by Tychus here. Actually picking off, I think, three people in that fight. Almost on his own. Just finding the low people and wiping them out. And really nice job by Tassadar. Staying alive. Getting the damage down. Fantastic job by Mad Corps in general. But that's probably the best really? fight we've seen so far. I've got to say, i got to agree here, and this was also a perfect timing to get the team wipe. I mean, now with the boss just marching and wailing away at this keep, he's going to get this initial keep, and this does give uh, Mad Corps the time to just take more and more camps. And final blow with the keep, wow. Yeah, you're doing the ground pound for style. <laughs> Very nice <laughs> there by the golem. Very cool. But I'm really not too sure about free agent's chances here, and we're seeing Mad Corps. They're heading towards the free agent Golem. Let's see if they can steal it, because this is a risky maneuver. They're only one level ahead, and yeah. not for very long. We're going to see 17 being hit by free agents very soon, and we're going to have another team fight here. Oh, there is going to be a team fight, even if they don't take the bot. Ooh, nice stun coming in. Entenswerk immediately getting uh, getting hit on, and knocks out also. But they're all so low here. Shadowmere getting out of that fight, but Kerrigan is taken out. Monto also in trouble. There comes the body block out of Hippo. And they take him out. And the rogue is popped. They want to engage on Lonely. Illidan goes down. And Another Testingo gets out of that fight. Another fantastic strafe there by Valor. Once again, staying at the back, staying on the other side of this little bit of terrain. And doing Ooh. the damage. And now he's going to be Tychus needs to watch out. Can he get 
caught. No, he's not going to get caught. He's going to have to back up. Tassadar is super low and they're going on to him. Using the Feral Lunge to try and catch him, but they don't want to, you don't want to follow this. You're taking too much damage, Shadow Bear. Be very careful. They're going to back up. They're yeah, they should just go for the Tribute. Uh, they have one Tribute already, so this is going to put Mad Corps in a spot where they need to watch out for that third Tribute. And as you said, I mean, this was an excellent fight for free agents. Um, really good job by uh, Illidan just jumping in there, choosing the right targets every single time. And um, yeah, just focusing down what needed to be focused in that fight. Indeed, like you said, fantastic job by the Illidan. Just picking off the Lili, who is actually, even mm -hmm. if you look at this team, what are the priority targets? Because you're not going to burst down Tychus. He is the delicious target, but you're not going to burst him down because of his Odin. So it makes a lot more sense to pick off someone like Lili, pick off someone like Kerrigan, because they're going to be the easier targets to kill. You can go after Tychus after you've killed everyone else. Lili, however, is going to remove the sustain from the enemy team. Oh, and everyone's just so bunched up. There comes Illidan jumping in one more time, but this time he doesn't have his rogue available, but Manto taking a lot of damage. He's... Oh, he got the shield. There's the polymorph on him, but Illidan had to jump out. And Kerrigan is taken out on Mad Corp's side. Odin also getting a lot of damage in, and Hippo jumping on top of him. I think he should get him. There's the body block. Yes, he takes him out. And Tessada has to get out of there, but there comes the root. And they are all on top of him. This should be it for Tessada. Another fantastic strafe there out of Tazdingo. He's been on point with these ever since his team really got to the point where they could just withstand the damage. Really superb play by Free Agents, getting them back into this game. Oh, this is an interesting choice by Free Agents. They opted to go for the boss instead of grabbing the tribute. I don't know what's what exactly was the reasoning here. But this is going to be a tough fight that's coming up for the third and final tribute for both of these teams. This could decide the game. Both teams are actually approaching level 19. The next tribute will get, whichever team grabs it, a bit closer to that level 20. This golem may take the top forward, which is going to give free agents that extra boost into 19, almost into 20, in, uh, through 19, actually, because they're going to hit 19. Fax to right wing, clearing up this wave. There we go. So whichever team hits level 20 first, it's going to have a huge advantage in the next team fight. If free agents, the closer they get to it now, the better it's going to be in their next team fight. Exactly. And then they want to take like little skirmishes just to get that little bit more extra X HP, uh, XP in and possibly go to 20, but it's still three quarters of the way down. But it should be enough if they take out a little bit more towers here. Tribute. Oh, tributes coming up in the top. It's actually in a pretty good spot for free agents. And they're all just stopping the assault, going straight for the tribute. Excellent yep. move. And uh, Bad Corps, they need to clear this goal, but they have yep. to fight. They have to interrupt this tribute because what's going to happen if they don't is free agents are going to get not only the curse, but they're going to hit level 20 while they're doing it. And Bad Corps are going to be there in time. It's so close. Oh, Shadow Bear wants to stop it. They take so that third and final tribute. It. In fact, if they do fight, it has to be now, because they can't fight when their opponents are at 20 and they're not. I think this is the only time they're going to get to fight. Oh, they're going to get to 20 in, in, in a few seconds, though. Uh, this is like, once the towers go down, they're at 20. And, yep, they're taking the bruisers. Mad Corps wants to defend with the bruisers. Excellent choice here, but it's only a few more XP until we have level 20 on free agents. This fort will do it. Yep, definitely going to do it. Or not, and but the minions will. Okay, that's ready. You can't fight now. They are backing up into their base. They're just going to defend here. They cannot fight until they have their own 20. So they're going to play it safe, soak XP, clear the waves, and try to stay alive. Whereas uh, free agents, they want to do as much damage as possible. They know that Mad Corps won't fight here. And they're going to take advantage of that. We have Demonic Form on Illidan. Uh, the Farseer's Blessing on Rhaegar, and Double Bolt of the Storm on Vala and Brightwing, Arthas uh, going for his Army of the Dead improvement there, and looks like they're gonna take the keep as well. Oh, that's a really strong opening here for them. Oh, Manto jumping in there, he's taken a lot of damage, but a good stun, and Vala is taken out. Yeah, Vala does go down before she can even use her Bolt of the Storm to get away. Brightwing has TP'd out as well, Illidan's being dropped very low, and he does go down! Great engagement here by Mad Corps, looking in such a tough position, but they got the perfect engage and were able to pick off those two members of Free Agents. Fantastic play.
Indeed, indeed it was. And there's the deep dive out of Anoop. And oh, what a clutch blink by Entenswerk. Wow. Reactions, though. Yeah, that was nuts. I think it might have been like he, he hit the blink just before, uh, the bolt of the storm just before. Because that, that was just too, too close. Yeah, that was amazing. And now we're going to see Mad Corps trying to get back control of the game. They have hit level 20 as well, and they're going to grab this golem to get their XP up, get that lane pushing. Their level 20 ultimates, we have big red button on the Odin, the upgraded Archon, and the upgraded Jug of a Thousand Cups. That is 1,000 cups froze at, uh, Jug of a Thousand Cups froze at twice as many. So it's doing about 10,000 healing over six seconds. <laughs> that is insane. I think, um, yeah, not quite as good as Ancestral Healing, I think. But... Sorry, sorry, I, mis I misread it. I actually misread the wrong thing. Um, it's actually it's actually going to be doing about 1,200 per okay. six seconds. Whereas Ancestral Healing does uh, 900. Okay, so it is a little bit better. It is. Mm -hmm. Only, and it's, also, it's spread out along, amongst a lot of people though. Whereas Ancestral Healing, it does splash, but it doesn't heal as much to other people. But this push by Mad Corps is very nice. Taz Dingo's been caught. Good bolt. Can he stay alive? No, I don't think he can. Monto is on the chase, but ooh, there's a Polymorph from Monto. He needs to get back. And a few hits already going off on the core, but this is not the time to dive the core. They're gonna try it. Strafe is at the back doing damage, gets interrupted by Monto. And Tazdigo is once again caught re in a really tough position here, but needs to deal the damage. Try and save his team's core here, and he's gonna try it. Going onto Jellic here, trying to remove the heal. Struggle of Thousand Cups was already used, and they're going onto it. It's dropping so low. This is gonna be so close. Odin has finished. He's gonna oh. do the damage, and he does it. Wow. Insane. Manto with the deep dive on the other side. I think this is what saved the fight. I mean, Tychus was about to drop here, but then Manto just switching sides. Tesla also going into the shield form. Um, wow, what a nice save. Incredible, incredible. Incredible indeed. Fantastic play there by Mad Corps. Looking in a bit of a tough position there, but they chose their fights really well. They got back in the game from a position that looked a bit tough, but they just picked their moment. It was perfect, and they were able to take back control of the game and push for the final win. Amazing play.